My name is John Rowe. Welcome. I'm part of the Rowe family farm who have been farming with using perennials, raising cattle and chickens for the past 40 plus years. Right now we're on my farm just north of Guelph. We raise grass to feed to cows to provide very healthy food for people to eat. On farms like this, we build soil probably about one-tenth of an inch a year. We can't continue the model we're doing when we're destroying so, so much of the environment we need for support. We've got too much carbon dioxide in the air. That makes looking after the grass a primary concern. Our vegetation that we consume is annual crops, and we need to use annuals to, to, as part of the model with perennials to re-fertilize soil naturally without using the artificial methods that are so damaging. Plants to grow need three macronutrients. The hardest one to keep in the soil is nitrogen. So if you wanted to grow this stuff in your lawn, Clover. it would be a very helpful thing for our environment. But here, we grow it to put nitrogen into the soil, which helps, helps everything in the neighborhood to grow. And the cows love it as well. We are taking carbon dioxide out of the air and putting it into the soil. It requires less fertilizer to be added to the soil, and it provides a, a fertile base to grow new food. By moving them every day, the grass gets a month to, re, to regrow and put down storage and deeper roots. They don't overgraze one particular grass. Mad cow, or BSE, is a, a disease that's caused by prions. We never fed animal byproducts to cows. It increases the rate of growth of the animals um, as a bypass protein, but it's not sensible. When that became an issue, I must say that it did certainly elevate people's awareness of thinking about the way we feed our animals. Their natural diet would include primarily grass, and when they're on a diet that their bodies have evolved to consume, the pH in their stomach is such that they break it down in a way that they produce a lot of healthy fats and um, can live to ripe old ages without very many health problems. And we get to then use that as our food source, and so we get very beneficial fats, very low levels of the bad cholesterol and high levels of good cholesterol. Our focus is on looking at a system that is sustainable and maintainable. We want, a, we want a system where not only do we have food that is healthier than what we can get other ways, but food that is the same, same time is doing things for our environment that make it more hospitable for man to live. This farm is not a certified organic farm. It used to be at one time. I haven't changed what, I, what I've done, but the principle of being certified is, is not a critical issue to me. It's what, it's what we do. We have created our own sets of rules that we think are important to make sure that um, the, the cooperative of people who work with supplying rural farms are following standards that we think are important. Recently the WHO put out a, a bulletin announcing that um, we need to reduce the use of processed foods and um, possibly red meat because of carcinogenic risks. We need to understand that for many generations and centuries we've been eating red meats and we don't know how it affected our ancestors, but we seem to have adapted. And so I think that we, it's worthy of us to research. And at this point, I'm of the opinion that the likelihood is that the carcinogenic effects may be related more specifically, like many other things, to the profound changes that have happened in the last half century in the way we adapted diets.